Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy Scoville, and you're on the lifeboat. What's happening? Let's say hi to some people before we get rolling. Hello, Valerie. What's happening? Matrix Rabbit. Good to see you. Shannon Smith. Always a pleasure. Mischief Managed. Janet G. Brazy. How are you? Bacon Bits Ben Turner. Good to see you. Good to see you, Ben. There's one with cats. What's up, Shell? So, uh, not sure if you've heard. There's going to be a um, an eclipse happening today. The um, going back a long, long way. Eclipses have messed with us on uh, on Earth. They've uh, their reason to uh, to freak out, especially if you didn't know what was happening. Right? These were these were fairly scary occurrences. There is uh, there are stories of um, Columbus, whether or not they're true or not, who knows? But using pr the prediction of an eclipse coming to say he was calling the gods down and you know, all kinds of things along those lines. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but if you've ever seen one, right, these are pretty, uh, this is one of those things that, uh, that happens in your lifetime that literally is just awesome. It's one of those things that, that, you know, takes your breath away. And it also scares some people. It also gets conspiracy people cranking, right? Nothing like a good total eclipse of the, uh, of the sun to really get some people uh, fired up. So let's go over all the fear crap that they're pumping out here on the uh, on the net currently. The fear porn people are going to tell you that there are three rockets that are getting launched by NASA, uh, whilst, uh, or I guess they would be getting launched by somebody because NASA doesn't launch, but it's NASA's project. Uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to allegedly, apparently they're trying to fire this thing up there so. There's always tests that get done during, hello, Kristen Melinda. Hello, Jen Marie. Wesley John Holmes, good to see you. Layla, how are you? Brenda, Tree Hugger, good to see you. Um, so there's always a lot of experiments that get done because we want to know what happens when the sun's not shining on the planet, right? Because that doesn't happen very often. We don't really get a shot too often of seeing what happens when the sun's out, but we're not getting hit with its rays. So they're doing all kinds of stuff. They're firing three rockets. Well, you know what? I'm gonna take you on the uh, I'm gonna take you on the trip, Valerie, and you're not even gonna have to leave. How's that? You can hang out with all of these people. You're not gonna worry about looking up and burning your eyes. We're gonna do it here. And I, I'll be honest, uh, I was I would have scrapped this puppy, right? Um, I would have uh, I would have scrapped this thing and probably stayed inside. But I made a promise to somebody in 2017 when this happened the last time. My friend said, I've never been outside for one of these because they simply will not let an inmate outside during a uh, eclipse. And as my friend Q said, they think we're all, um, he used the R word for people who are, uh, you know, who's, anyway, he said, they're afraid we're going to stare directly at the sun. And there's probably some truth to that. They probably would be some people that would stare up at it. And they just thought it's easier than having a bunch of people getting down to the, uh, uh, to the medical uh, and, and getting their eyes looked at, they thought maybe it would be better if we just keep them locked up. But I remember looking out the window and as the shadow came across, the birds were on the edge of the shadow, right? Like hunting for worms or whatever, because as it got dark, apparently the worms started coming up. But it was funny to watch the birds sit in the sun, but right on the edge and just, you know, doing their thing. But it was, uh, you know, Q said to me, Man, be outside for the next one. You know, be outside uh, for the um, for the next one. And uh, I said, yeah, you know what? I'll do that. And at the time, I remember them saying it's going to be in 2024. And you know, when it's 2017 and you're a convict, 2024 sounds like five millennium away. You know, but uh, here we are. Here we are in 2024, and I remember them saying at the time that the uh, place to see it was going to be Dallas. I've told the story before on the lifeboat. But there was a guy in the unit who said, if we keep polluting the planet the way we're doing, we're going to get a lot more of these. I swear to you. And normally I kept my mouth shut. My friend uh, Austin was with me at the time and I looked at him and he went, don't do it. Don't do it. And I, I, I sat there and the guy was like, you know, and he, he kept going on. And finally, I was just like, wait a sec, man. You're under the assumption that um, pollution uh, is causing this, right? And uh, he said, what do you think causes it? I said, well, uh, it would be when the, you know, just the orbits 
of these uh, planets occasionally line up that way. I said, they can tell you when everyone happened going all the way back and they can tell you when they're going to be happening going forward. And he goes, yeah, well then where is the, uh, then where is the, uh, uh, when is the next one going to happen? I said, 2024. In fact, I called the day because they had been saying it all day on CNN or Fox or whatever one uh, channel they were watching. I said, uh, it's uh, it's going to be April 8th, 2024. And the best place to see it is going to be Dallas because that's what they were saying at the time. And uh, he's like, and how do you know that? I said, because they said it on the same channel that you're watching like 200 times today. But um, do I have a telescope? I do not. Um, a question came up. Why would I not? Uh, why would I not go outside for it? Um, I mean, I, I probably would have gone out to look at it. I just wouldn't have made a very big deal about it. I think um, if, if I hadn't uh, promised somebody, I'm getting to the point, I swear to you, where I, my downtime, I just don't have a crap load of it. I, uh, to take, you know, an hour or two, even if it's something really cool like this, I just don't have that, uh, that kind of time these days, which is admittedly kind of sad. But I'm doing cool things, right? I'm doing some things that um, that I think are uh, are making a difference. So um, am I? Uh, am I doing too much? I am. You know, I haven't left my house. I I need that. I'm I'm doing too much. I'm uh, I am. Where's uh, Where's Quibble when you need her? I'm doing too much, but I'm in the process of rearranging my life so that I'll be doing less. However, they they uh, talk about these fear indexes, right? Hello, Henny. Good to see you. What's happening in New York? They talk about these fear indexes, right? When when uh, people on the planet start really feeling dicey. Well, we've got a lot going on, right? Um, we have, you know, the the uh, the conflict that's going on in the Middle East, right? Which I know that you could probably have said that at any point in my life, right? Because the uh, uh, sadly, the Arabs and the Jews have been at each other's throats for as long as I've been alive, and uh, for considerably longer than that. You know, but that's at probably the, the gnarliest it's been in my lifetime. So probably the same for most of your lifetimes. Um, and then on top of that, you know that the locusts are coming out today. <laughs> These things happen every seven years or whatever. And this is going to be a like a, a triple. There are three locust uh, streams or whatever swarms that are all coming out at the same time. It almost sounds a little uh, a little terrifying. It's got this end of the world kind of a feeling to it, doesn't it? I mean, seriously. So NASA is going to launch three rockets. Guess what else is happening today? Coincidence, by the way, because they actually reached out. I read a big article from CERN. CERN, for those who do not, uh, who are not aware of it, is a um, is the biggest machine on planet Earth. This machine is so large that it actually is in a couple of different countries. I think it might take three of them because it sits in a very kind of odd place. But it is a, a research facility where they study things that um, hurt my brain just to think about. But they have built something called a Hadron uh, a hadron Collider or a Super Collider, right? Uh, and what they do is, and I'm going to simplify this as much as possible because I'm, uh, I'm not burdened by deep thought. They fire particles at each other, right, in opposite directions, and they're hauling the mail. Like these things are traveling really, really quickly. Not as fast as a Scoville Brothers electric car, but pretty close to that fast, right? Millions and millions and millions of uh, miles an hour or second or some such crap, whatever it is, they're hauling the mail. And then they smash them into each other, which I admittedly think is kind of cool, right? Because when I was a kid, smashing things into each other with the exception of matchbox cars, which everybody else did, I did not. I was pretty fond of keeping my matchbox cars looking good. Um, Balake Richardson, good to see you. Midwest Kid Doc. Well, they're firing CERN up today, people. Now, they say it has nothing to do with the fact that today is an eclipse. They just happen to be firing this thing up again. Um, and they got their first stable wave uh, on Saturday, I believe. Now, what that means is that yeah, it's, it's, it's working, right? We have the, uh, the particles are going around and they're doing it the way they're supposed to and stable and everything is great. So the next step is to smash them the hell into one another. And I'm not a conspiracy theory kind of guy. I, I mean, occasionally I don the uh, the tinfoil hat. I've not put one on yet today. But it does seem odd that it just happens to be uh, today is the day. They do say it's a coincidence. But I feel like if, you're, if your wave was working three days ago, why didn't you just slam the crap into each other right then? 
if you're not waiting on the eclipse to do this, if it's just a coinky dink, as uh, Z Dub says, out of curiosity, then why why didn't you just do it when you had the stable wave? You said, okay, everything is ready to go. All right, shut it down. We'll come back on Monday. I don't know. I don't know. Not buying it. Not buying it. Especially because I get the idea that people don't really leave CERN. I'm basing this on books I read. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, if you ever read um, Angels and Demons is the second book in the, um, the series by Dan Brown. So it goes um, The Da Vinci Code, uh, Angels and Demons, one that takes place in Washington, D.C. I can't remember. Something Symbols. And then uh, the last one, I don't remember what that one's called either, but I read all of them. Those were books that I read. But they, uh, the second one, Angels and Demons, um, there is a, the, the, the book opens with a, um, a homicide that takes place inside of CERN. So they talk quite a, a good deal about it. And it sounds more like a college campus, really. Uh, doesn't the people that run CERN uh, ever read a science fiction book? <laughs> you know, the people of CERN might read science fiction. Um, I don't know. They uh, they certainly are firing on cylinders a little different than the rest of us. You know what I'm saying? Um, I I love to to I love to dip my toe into the uh, into the intellectual pool of the kind of stuff that these people talk about, but I'm not really smart enough to understand that. You know what I mean? Like the Schrodinger's cat thing. Um, aside from the fact that it should have been an animal that was considerably less cute than a cat, right? Maybe uh, Schrodinger's goat or something. Maybe Schrodinger's bat. That would be a good one. Uh, Nicole Jonker, lost symbol. Thank you very much, Nicole. Lost symbol. Um, oh, that's right. The devil comet will be uh, visible today. Interesting, too. The devil comet. Stink bugs came in to Pennsylvania from China in the 90s, and now they are pests. Same with the C-plus math. And uh, cane toads in Australia. Did not know that. The cane toad, you say. Well, what Australia needs is a couple of more frightening animals or insects. Holy Hannah, I feel terrible for people. Everything in that country can kill you. That's the look of it to me. Perhaps I am wrong, but to me, it looks like everything in that country can kill you. Read that you read that eclipses happen one to three years, but often only seen at the poles or in the middle of the ocean, so we don't hear about it. Correct. Um, Schrodinger's goat. Yeah, that would be better, don't you think? Um, well, I, they're not as adorable as cats. I'm sorry. You know, if, if I had to get rid of one, if they came in and said, Tommy, this is how it goes. I'm sorry, man, but this is on you. Are we getting rid of cats or are we getting rid of goats? How long do you think that discussion would take? Seriously, I'd be, uh, sorry about your goats. Bad news. They're gone. I'm sticking with the kitties, but that's me. I, uh, I prefer things that are, that are furry that, right. That you can pet and they're really nice, you know? Um, that's my Schrodinger scorpion. There's an interesting concept. Very, very cool. I think that that, uh, yeah, nobody likes scorpions. I shouldn't say that. I know a bunch of people that tattooed them onto their body. So some people must love them. You don't have any poisonous snakes or spiders where you live. It's a wonderful thing. Tree hugger, I should live where you live. Uh, Mo Love, let me back up. And see if I can find your comment. There you go. Um, Valerie says, okay, I, ch I would choose goats too. <laughs> now, you know, on the bright side, we're not going to force you to choose. Um, this is probably the best place that you could go for any information having to do with the solar eclipse in any way, shape, or form. This is my partner um, and friend, Mark Wages. Uh, Mark um, helped me uh, as the uh, co-captain of the lifeboat for the first couple of years here, and we still remain the, uh, the best of friends. It is his channel is a, uh, a wealth spring of information on all things space weather. If you're not hip to the uh, space weather concept, you can go back and watch a video that he and I did on it. But basically, 
weather in space comes from uh, things firing off of the uh, the sun, our sun. You know, um, when uh, when our sun, you know, which is a large um, what is it, fission or fusion, whatever it is, it's a big, huge nuclear ball of wow. And when stuff shoots off of it, it does create like um, a wave effect. Lurking deep today, says Johnny Scoville. By the way, if you have not been here in a while, um, we have renamed the, the official participation trophy of the uh, lifeboat. It is now referred to from this point forward as uh, a Molesky, like you would uh, call something a, uh, an Emmy. Well, we've named it after Steve Molesky. Um, and uh, it was not my idea, but I loved it. I loved the idea. Dan Brown Books, The Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, Lost Symbol, Inferno, and Origin. You know what? I don't know that I read Origin. Inferno, I think, was the last one that I read. Um, somebody, uh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't know uh, exactly. I am trying so hard. Not going into a hole of negative about myself. It is so hard. Or beating myself up for who I am. Hiding in a corner is easier. Nonsense. Well, easier, yes, but there's absolutely nothing that you're going to get in that corner. That's the problem. It's way easier to hide in a corner. There's no question, right? However, if you're hiding in the corner, all of life is passing you by that you're not interacting, right? We know, Mary Jones, that connection, right, is the cure for everything. You've experienced this, right? So if you're hiding in the corner, you're not connecting. As far as beating yourself up for who you are, right? This is a defect in humanity, not in you personally. But this is a defect in humanity. Here's what happened. We don't have to worry about all of the stuff that we used to have to worry about. For instance, I have a cup of coffee, right? I got a machine over there in the corner. I drop a cup into, I smack it, one button, and this thing spits out a cup of coffee, which, by the way, is perfect every single time, right? Well, there was a time where doing anything like that required a whole lot of work, right? I also can go over to that box that is refrigerated and take meat or whatever else I want out of there. Well, there was a time where none of this was an option. So all day long, every day, we worried about coming up with food, right? And making sure that whoever our mate was and our offspring was protected. And we didn't really have time to get to, you know, consider a whole lot of other things going on because that was labor intensive right? That was big time labor intensive. You didn't go down and rent uh, a place to live or buy a place. You had to, you had to etch out everything. Yeah. Now, these days, all of those things are kind of um, handled, right? I mean, yeah, we still got to work. We still got to make money, but, but we're not, we have a lot of time on our hands. We have a lot of time to think about things that the animals of the, of the uh, human variety that came before us didn't need to think about. And then we made it even easier. Now debate is over, right? About stupid stuff, right? Why is the sky blue? Well, ask Siri, right? Now, everything you ever wanted to know is right there in your hand. Ask it a question, it will answer it. The only question it won't answer is, what's wrong with me? Hey, ask your phone that. Ask your phone, why am I not happy? See what your phone says. So, we have to start from scratch, right? We really got to start from scratch as human beings because we, we don't have the equipment that we need. Sorry, we don't. Now, you can find this in a lot of different ways. There are people that meditate. There are people who pray and have a, a higher power that they interact with. Whatever works for you, you have to find a plan. Now, I have found as the most defective person on planet Earth, right? I wasn't starting at ground zero. I was starting at a negative 250, right? I had to do about 250 in labor to get to, to zero. I started out really messed up. So I had to put a lot more crap into place, right? I had to put a lot more crap into place to make this work for me. Other people, you know, everyone has to do this to some extent, 
But what you have to do is you have to design a system, right? To make up for what we don't do right. Do right. Deadly do right. I, uh, there's, there's like my brain, for instance, let's go with me, right? My brain doesn't work quite right. And because of that, I have coping issues in, uh, in a lot of ways. And for years, I dealt with feelings of inadequacy by using heroin, right? And living a life of crime and sleeping with everybody and just being an overall idiot, right? For decades and decades. So when I decided that the time had come to try to make a life, to get sober and do all of that, right? With the help of, uh, of my, uh, my friend and brother, I started that process. I needed, right? I needed a whole new set of tools I wasn't born with. That's a bummer. I had to learn how to cope with anger, sadness, happiness, right? Being ecstatic, depression, right? Loss. These are things you learn when you're six. Sadly, um, when you're 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, right? Say right around from 12 to 30. Don't think that you, you got this stuff figured out at 18 because you don't. No one does. And they're figuring this out. That's why 30 is the new 20. 40 is the new 30. It's not just because we're living longer. It's because we realize we don't have a clue what we're doing. So I have put stuff. I need an external hard drive. I can't work with an internal hard drive. It doesn't work. I need an external hard drive for this operating system, right? I journal. I write down everything. It's so bad at this point, right? And I've been pretty open about it. But very often, whatever's happening to me, if, if it's happening on three fronts, and by the way, everything is always happening on three fronts, right? There's a book that's getting written. There's a, a reality show that, that is uh, being discussed. There's, you know, this product or that product or, you know, there's a lot that's always happening. And at the same time, I've got a group of people that are trying to change their lives. Ask for advice, need a little help, whatever. I need an external hard drive to organize any of that, to try to get it into some kind of a format where I'm not a blithering idiot. So I guarantee you, if you think that you walk away from dope and all of the equipment that you still got inside is working the way it's supposed to and everything is groovy, fantastic. If that works for you, God bless you, right? If you don't believe in God, find one and start thanking them because you're probably the first person I've met whose equipment works well enough after being a drug addict to just simply do it. The rest of us need some equipment, like an external hard drive. Right? Journaling is a big deal. It really is. Also, constant communication. If you do not have the ability to pay for a therapist, get a friend who is going to act as a therapist. Yeah, right? Or at least listen to you. They don't even need to... But our problem is we don't get everything here out of here. We leave it inside and we're not hunting, right? We're not having to chase things down. We're not having to plant. We're not having to build a home. So we got a lot of time to think about who we are, right? What we've done. Are, are we making a difference? Are we doing anything? You know what, Mary Jones? The situation that you're describing sounds awful. Right? It does. It sounds awful. I'm going to read this. Mary Jones says, I just had a close family member that is being unpleasant to me and not seeing someone I love uh, deeply is stuck in the middle. It's just difficult right now. It's making me feel down about myself. Well, the situation sucks. And hello, Charlie Murphy. And everybody here has been in a situation that's similar. It may not be exact, but we've all kind of been in situations like where it really sucks to be caught in the middle anyway, right? That just, that's one of those things that no one, no one likes, but it sounds like a, a, a rotten situation. However, you can feel down about the situation. That's legit, but you're not the problem in the situation, okay? The fact that someone's being unpleasant to you, mean people suck, right? Mean people suck. It does nothing. It doesn't pay off. It's not good communication. It doesn't move anything forward, right? And it's always done just to be a jerk. So that you're not the problem. The person that's being unpleasant is. 
we have to get good. This is, external hard drives are great for this, by the way. But you have to get good at being able to say, I'm not the situation, right? I'm in the situation. Very often for me, I got to say, not only am I not the situation, but I'm really not even the dude in the situation. And what I mean by that is I'm not my mind. I'm not. I got a brain up here, wants me to fail. Straight up. I got a brain that would, if, if I gave my brain the keys to Tommy Scoville, my brain would drive to Mexico and buy heroin. So I can't do that. I have to keep in place an entire system that I do that keeps me from giving the keys to that part of my brain, right? Because we know what happens when I do. I did it for decades. The way that I stay where I'm at is to never, ever, ever start that fight because I lose that fight. There is the power. People say, I don't like the, the whole I'm powerless thing. It's, we're talking about word salad, right? Semantics at this point. I take my power in the knowledge that I can't win a fist fight with smack. Does that make me powerless? I don't know. I think it makes me rather powerful. The fact that I know there's a substance out there that is a poison to me, and I'm smart enough to say I'm not taking that for any reason, right? I don't think that makes me weak. I think it makes me strong. Mary Jones, you're sorry to dump at the lifeboat? That's it. You're getting chastised. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be nice, but you're getting chastised. Mary, we come here to dump. That is, that is what the lifeboat is. This is where you come so that you don't suffer in silence. You're not allowed to apologize for dumping at the lifeboat. That's just silly. I love you, by the way, but you're not allowed to apologize for that. Mary, it's them that is preying on you. Don't feed them your inner self. I'm struggling with similar and only just getting my head around it. Nicola, it's a lot easier though when you help Mary, then when you try to get your brain around your own, isn't it? Isn't that funny? We're always a lot better at giving advice to somebody because our emotions don't get involved, right? Mary is emotionally involved in this in a big way because she cares about the people involved. It's one of the first things she told us, right? Somebody she cares deeply about. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we know what the problem is. When your emotions are attached Logic and emotion don't run at the same course side by side like railroad tracks. One of them always wants to get squirrely on you. Guaranteed. One of them is going to start doing this number. Doesn't matter which one it is either. <laughs> if your emotions get out of whack and you're being really logical, okay. But if you're being, you know, if you're, if you go the either route, what we want is some form of harmony, right? Some form of harmony. But what you got to know, Mary, is that talking about this, right? Dumping or whatever you called it. Um, that's how you're going to heal. That's how you're going to get through this. This is how you're going to realize that the problem's not you, right? That you're not, you're not bad. You're not a bad person. This is, this is a situation that sucks. And from the sound of it, it sucks because somebody involved is a crap communicator, right? People who, who choose their words for the purpose of inflicting harm are bad communicators. They're bad communicators. They know that whatever it is they're talking about, they got no merit. So what we'll do, you know, yeah, you, you look ugly, right? And, and that's an obviously a very extreme example, right? The scene from, uh, from Ace Ventura comes to mind. When she goes, you know what? You, you act like a child. Yeah, and you're fat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just that that juvenile kind of, but anyone who is saying anything, whether it's passive aggressive, whether it's in your face aggressive, but if somebody's words have been chosen to hurt you, that's a problem. That's a problem. And people do it 50 times a day, right? People who do it 50 times a day. Living in the gray area says anyone who has felt different for as long as they can remember has had a really hard time being in this society. Should at least look into uh, high masking autism, ADHD, etc. Saved my life knowing. Well, um, I'm all for talking to your medical professional about everything. Everything. Interesting. 
Valerie says, I always think about myself in a Scrooge type of way, past Val, future Val, um, et cetera. Um, so past Val has re royally screwed up. Present Val and future Val would uh, really appreciate a fix. Well, there you go. I get it. Um, I do. I, I refer to page two and page three, Tommy, but it's the same thing, right? Page two, Tommy did a number on everybody. So there can't be a page two, Tommy. He's got to go. Like all that had to go, every bit of it. And I fall back. We all do. We all fall back to the things that we were and the things that we've done. On the bright side, I don't fall back, right? Sticking a needle in my arm. Um, the All of the other stuff we can get over. What I really can't get over um, would be, I don't have another relapse. And I'm not, I'm not being, I just, I don't. If I, if I were to, uh, if I were to get back in it, it's over. It might take six months. It might take two years, but it ends with, uh, with that stuff killing me. It's a very, very, uh, insidious substance and, uh, and boy, I'm allergic to it. Right. Like nothing else on earth. I really have a problem with that, uh, that stuff. Castor oil on eyelids before bed helps me tremendously. I'm a terrible insomniac. Really? Well, Florence, castor oil on the eyelids to help you sleep. I would never have thought of that. You know, this is, um, so living in the gray area says, look into it deeply for yourselves first before talking to doctors or for taking to doctors. Unless the doctors know about high masking autistics, they don't understand it yet. They don't understand addiction uh, for us either. I believe that that's the truth. However, just being real and keeping it real because it's how I do it. I get really nervous when people start to do that process, especially those of us who have been, who have struggled with addiction. Um, that is a, there is a whole, um, there's a whole, field of study now, right? About this phenomenon, right? About the phenomenon of as you start to chase down things that you think could be wrong. So my, my brain injury, right? There is a, uh, there is a spot on my brain that is dead, right? That thus cerebral infarction, right? There are a bunch of other things, terms that you can use for, uh, for what uh, I'm experiencing, right? But every one of them is scarier than the previous. And if you start to read about the stuff, like I can, I have really, really gone down some pretty terrifying rabbit holes with stuff that I'm not making up. I know I have it. But when you start to read it, uh, for me, I'm, I'm just saying, be careful. Be, be careful that, you, that we tend to be people that if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? The addict motto. Um, and we just got to be careful with, with I, I, I am more about researching than anybody alive. I'm just saying, please, everybody be careful when you do. That's all. Um, it's, it, it is really, there is a phenomenon of where we take ourselves, be it a round or a square or a triangle, we force it into that hole because this lends itself to that. As I said, this is a field of study. And when you start to research things very often, you, you see there's a phenomenon where you see yourself in every diagnosis. It can, it can be frightening. I do believe this person is undiagnosed Asperger, says Mary Jones. After raising a child with autism, I know what the signs look like. It makes it difficult and I just have to turn it over to God, but it's hard. Uh, Mary, it sounds hard. This sounds like a really tough situation. And if you know, this is this is one that I think we all struggle with this really hard. I was talking to Johnny Scovo about this the other day. Um, it, it gets back to my, you know, the, I, I repeat the same things over and over and over again, right? Because they just make sense to me. And in a lot of ways, it gets back to that, don't try to teach a fish to ride a bike thing, right? I, I tap down. I don't try to, if I know the person that I'm talking to, Maybe he, maybe uh, he or she is on the spectrum, or maybe he or she has 
Asperger's, or maybe he or she just straight doesn't like me and is mean, whatever the case may be. But when I know that there is, there is a diminishing chance that anything is going to get worked out, then I just simply can't do it anymore. I don't waste my, uh, my time, so to speak, right? Because it's, I can, I can spend a lot of time around negative people, watching them suck me into the bowels of the, you know, of a place I don't need to be, right? Um, sometimes you can't get away, but sometimes you can. Sometimes we stick around for debates and arguments and things that there's no reason. There's just no reason, right? Just go, you know what? Honestly, at this point, I'm not up for it. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just, I don't have it in me. Maybe I'm getting old. Uh, Brazy says, just giving, hold on one second. Just giving everyone a warm hug. <laughs> We're all weird and beautiful. You know what, my friend from north of the border, we are all, to be sure, a little weird uh, and to be sure, beautiful. I don't want to know anybody that's not weird. I really don't. I mean, you know any normal people? Tracy Range says, I'm 58 years old. I don't have to be a uh, hypochondriac. <laughs> I have legit had most things. You know what? You and me, uh, you and me both. Um, that that is. Um, this is a phenomenon I am aware of as well. Um, Living in the gray area says for autistics, especially those high masking. We even mask at the doctor's office. Um, we tend to act better there. It's hard for them to uh, to see us as we are. I know that um, this is an area that I'm I'm fairly familiar with, and I always feel weird when I talk about this because it's not my life. But um, you know, Cedar is a uh, my daughter is a, is autistic, and. Uh, incredibly high functional, right? My daughter is, you've probably uh, seen, seen her or, or listened to her, or, you know, um, she's done shows and has been uh, around uh, the, uh, the Discord server a lot, has uh, helped set it up. And, uh, you know, she's incredible, right? But absolutely, uh, Cedar can, Cedar is a, a person that has spent a lot of her life masking. Because the people that uh, that were raising her didn't want, didn't like the word autistic. Sadly, um, it's a it, it's a, a horrific thing for people that. Um, anyway, uh, Jeremy Shelton says every day I wake up until the time I go to bed. I seem to be the weird one. Everyone around me looks and acts differently than me. All of the people around me seem to be Japanese. That it's uh, it is odd. I can uh, I can see where that would start to. Uh... Well, no, you know, living in the gray area, we are uh, high. We are high functioning until we are. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, that's that's everybody, right? That's everybody. You know, regardless of whether you have a diagnosis of anything or you don't have a diagnosis of anything. Um, especially if you happen to be on this channel, there's a, there's a really good chance that that is the story of your life, right? Uh, we function beautifully until we don't, um, for instance, you know, I've, I've been very open and honest about it. The, uh, I functioned perfectly on heroin, right? Until I didn't, um, the first three to four years, maybe five years of, um, of heroin, there was, there was no problems. As crazy as that sounds, there just wasn't any problems until it started to, to really spin out of control. I thought I had found the perfect medication for me. Everything felt great. I was working, I was making a ton of money. Everything was just perfect, you know? I don't, I don't know if I know what normal people are. Um, Honestly, I don't know if I've ever met anybody um, that's normal. I, it's, a, uh, it's a concept that I'm not sure I completely understand. It was pretty fascinating uh, in, in prison because uh, I got the opportunity to, um, to do time and work in a factory that, you know, if you, t if you put everybody in jeans and a t-shirt, and you showed up, you wouldn't have known it was a prison. I mean, I was working in a factory, 
right? It looked very much like any other factory in the world, except we're all wearing khaki. Um, but once, you know, when you start to, uh, you start to work one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, people and there's a team kind of a situation where you have to get a product out, blah, blah, blah. So you've got white guys, black guys, Mexican guys, all forced to come together and work to get out the end product. In that same team are three or four people that are not incarcerated, right? These are free, uh, these are free workers. These are guys from the street, right? That are, you know, they're prison guards for all intents and purposes, but all they are are factory workers. They're guys who are working in a factory and they got enough training to be a prison guard because they, they're gonna be around inmates. But it was fascinating to have that kind of close interaction because to watch the normal people cope with the crap that was happening inside that uh, facility was fascinating because I'm looking out at the room and I know everybody in the room that's high. I know the people in the room that are trying to stay clean. Right. And it was, there are no, there is nobody normal. There really is nobody normal. It's, um, yeah, I mean, maybe there are, I just haven't met any of them. So we're just uh... wow, wow! I just found out my dear friend that I support in prison, and he's in the Bay, uh, who has been in for seven years, will be released in October of this year. We can finally see a light at the end of the tunnel. Good. Lord, he's in Pelican Bay today and he's getting out in, um, in October. I, this, uh, your friend is going to need all kinds of help and support. Blessed Teresa to have you, um, in his life. Uh, that is a really, really tough, tough prison, right? That is, I know guys that, that have done time. I know guys that have done time in Lewisburg and I know guys who have done time in, in Pelican Bay that have done both. And uh, I, I had a friend say to me that uh, Pelican Bay is as bad as uh, Lewisburg. And I've never heard anyone say that anything is as bad as Lewisburg, anybody that's been through it. But I had a friend that did time in both. And he said, it's a different kind of bad because th there's air conditioning and things, but um, it's a, it's a vicious, vicious prison yard. And going from that to the street is going to be a culture shock in a way that very few people on this earth will ever, thankfully, very few people on this earth will ever have to know. But going from a maximum security like Pelican Bay to the street, man, oh man, is your friend going to need tons of support. Get him here. Let him ask uh, questions. Anything we can do to help him, uh, Teresa, we would love to. For real. Love to. Um, anything we could do to help out. Um, because this is uh, that's that's a tough transition. Pelican Bay is like is like Lewisburg in that it is it is vicious. It's violent. It's uh, and you don't get a lot of time. There's no there's not much freedom. You're slammed all the time. So the the shock from having zero control over your life to having ninety five percent control over your life is a is really a shocker. You know what? I'm glad to hear this. Emotions are high this morning. I reached out to a friend for coffee. Make myself get out trying to get in a headspace to enjoy the eclipse. Uh, thank you, Boat, for being a place I can, uh, what does that say? Recenter. Awesome. I love that. My eyes are bad this morning. I don't know if you guys are like this, but if you wear glasses, there are days that my eyes are so much worse than others. Like there are days that they're, not, that they're not that bad and I feel like I can almost see. And then there are days that it's just like today's one of them. Since we, what I'm doing with my fingers is blowing the stuff up and making it bigger because I'm having a really tough time reading. Steven, good to see you. He says there are some plus points to ADHD, but um, far more negatives. Uh, well, I got it pretty good, so I don't know. Um, Donna says, uh, Valerie, you taught me about Pelican Bay. Pelican Bay's tough. I'm not, uh, 
He's in the fire program now there and just got to use the uh, bathroom with the door closed for the first time, as well as uh, change the uh, water temperature when he showered. Wow. See, it's, um, that's really, it gives you an idea, right? And I can't explain to you just how stoked he is, right? That's such a big deal. I remember so distinctly getting to the last yard, <coughs> the last yard that I did time at. I got there, you know, you spend 14 hours on a bus and planes and all of that to get. So I go walking in um, and I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta grab a shower. So I went in and got my, my towel, did everything else. And I, I walked down, you know, my stuff was still on the bed and I walked into the shower and I closed the curtain and there were two damn knobs there. It was like a hot knob and a cold knob. And I was like, you have got to be kidding. Like you can control the temperature in here. Um, I was, you know, only had that for five months, but it was, I remember it being a really big deal. Um, Mara says, don't you think we are feeling lonely and isolated because we don't live and work together anymore to survive? As in, it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, we don't even know who our neighbors are. Um, you know, yeah, I think there's a lot to that. Uh, the, uh, and, and you know what? I think back in the good old days, villages really did raise children. Like I know every in, in the ha in the town that I grew up in, everybody knew who I was. And certainly um, there were, you know, I had friends whose parents would, would absolutely, you know, I don't mean spank me, but I would get disciplined by my, uh, by my friend's mom. If I, if I stepped out of line, she would let me know it. <laughs> You know, but I think we lived in a different time, you know, right now you hear a lot. It, it takes a village. It takes a mom and dad. <laughs> you know, if you start with that, it goes a long way toward uh, toward the village. Sadly, I don't even think that more often than not, we even have that, you know, which is really kind of sad. It, um, it really is great if you can get, you know, a, a nice balance. And we don't have any balance. What am I saying? My uh, my brain has trouble uh, to remember like yours, Tommy. But when I told my near and dears that they have to uh, check in more than once. They said, uh, are you okay with that? <laughs> uh, kid you not. You know what? It's a, it's a strange, uh, it's a strange thing. You know, this, uh, as you start to get older and, and um, your brain starts to do, to do things, you, it's an odd, really an odd thing. Hello, Shelly. Good to see you. I'm glad that you're here. You know, can we get some thoughts and prayers for Lisa from Jersey? I haven't seen her name up in a long time, and I'm worried about her. I really am. Been uh, been on my uh, my mind for the last uh, three shows. Uh, and if any of you you know know her, then reach out to her and just tell her we're we're, uh, we're thinking of her. I have left a couple of messages on uh, messages that she had left and uh, haven't heard back. So. Thoughts and prayers for her. This people is as far as fear indexes go because of what's going on in the Middle East. Because we got the um, the chubby dictator from um, from North Korea. He's firing off rockets again, right? And all of these things that are happening, uh, there are a lot of people who are saying that we're seeing Diddy and all of these kind of sensational stories to kind of keep our mind off of the uh, ugly stuff that's really going on in the world. Regardless, there's a lot of ugly stuff going on in the world. And there's a lot of stuff right now that is, she was on Reese's. Thank you, SB. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, in fact, you just uh, you just made my day. I was really starting to uh, to worry about her. Uh, this, is, this is a time where people are are more anxious than they've ever been. Right. And as long as they've been testing this stuff now for those who tend to, to allow ourselves to, to feel that. Right. For those of us who are maybe a little bit more susceptible to fear. Right. Then today is a hell of a day. And we got swarms coming out of the ground that happen only once in every uh, seven years. We have rumors of wars and wars. We have three rockets getting launched during a total solar eclipse. Oh, and we're firing up the uh, Hadron Collider and there are people on planet Earth who are pretty damn convinced those things open portals, <laughs> right? Go, go, go Google uh, CERN firing up the Collider today and start reading the stories. I call it fear porn. You know what I'm talking about. 
there are uh, there are a lot of people out there who are currently doing everything within their power to make a buck. Because if you're really scared, you tend to not look away. So maybe uh, maybe take it in uh, doses, right? Maybe uh, maybe you know check out Mark Wages. Mark Wages is going to tell you that the stuff that happens in Marcus, even if he likes to say, you know what, if it were really bad, I wouldn't have time to tell you about it anyway. You know, the sun's, uh, the sun's stuff gets here pretty quick. But he is not a fear porn channel, but he's a channel that will tell you what's going on uh, in space. If there's something that that is a uh, total eclipse of the heart, says Teresa. <laughs> you know what? I love that song. And I love the version of it from, uh, from old school. It absolutely cripples me. Um, when I met Reese in... Uh, in Florida, when I met her in person at the, the time, uh, that song was on and uh, in the restaurant that we were eating in and she sang it the way that they did in old school. And it was really funny because people don't do that. And I just got, I got a really big kick out of it. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. Do you think it's the end of the world? Um, no. Uh, Johnny Scoville, how are you? What with a double beard for that? You're uh, you're doing a challenge style? Well, no. Since we could be the end of the world and the sun's going to go away, I'll make it come back if everybody's nice. You hear me? Yes. Um, Becca Jean, I will check my email. You're out on OMW. On my way out. You're on your way out. Okay, Becca Jean. Um, fear porn. Ellen Train, please use that. The L Train, you've got my permission. I don't think I came up with that. I'm pretty sure I stole that from somebody else. If I put overstimulated on a shirt, I'll hear all the jokes. Yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah, you would. And ladies, they say ADHD gets better with age. They lie. The hormone changes now is only making it worse. Millie, I'm sorry to hear that. Everything they ever told me was going to get better over time didn't. That's just the way it is. Yeah, Johnny Scoville uh, made, a, uh, made an appearance. It's nice, isn't it? The ancient gods have used uh, this eclipse as a message. They will spare us. All we have to do is hand over the Bee Gees. You know... I could see uh, where the um, the higher powers would want that kind of music, but I'm pretty sure they already have it. Tommy, 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 that's so funny. Love it. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm glad. Could it be the fear porn thing? Hey, cat. Hey, what do you say? Get up here. You hear? That's the real squirrel. Get up here. She is a loud pussycat that never stops talking. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Come here. See, but now we're into bird season, right? This is the time of year where every morning she can go from window to window watching the birdies. So it's going to be, we'll see a lot more of squirrel on the night boat, but on the, uh, like right now, she's, uh, she goes from window to window and chases the, there's a ton of animals here, right? I mean, we have a ton of animals. In, uh, in Arizona, it is just remarkable. We have uh, ground, those little prairie dogs, they're everywhere. We have bunny rabbits every two feet. Every single time I walk outside, I see a bunny rabbit. And this is what, and squirrel hops up onto the uh, French pane doors so that she's on the, literally the same height as your eyes holding onto it. You open the door and she just <laughs> swings with it. She is the funniest animal. You don't have an inner voice? Stop it. Everybody has an inner voice. You would be the only person I have ever met that doesn't have an inner voice. That really would be remarkable. Iguanas scare the crap out of you. I don't like anything that isn't furry. That's just kind of my rule of thumb. I like furry things. Okay. 
Do, 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 do. Uh, you love Johnny's videos with squirrel warming her beans on the bricks outside. She is a uh, she is a slave to uh, to the warmth. Old school is such a good movie, isn't it? Oh, the red tail hawk scared off the uh, the bunnies. Johnny told the story. We had a we had a hawk out there that basically like like was mean mugging Johnny. Johnny had picked up the cat and the bird didn't fly off. The bird was like, hey, that's my lunch. Hey, Matt Dukes, well played. I love it. Had a hydrocodone script, never took more than two a day. Proud to say I now take CBD gummies and hardly ever take the hydros for back pain. Love you, Tommy. Love you too. Really glad to hear that. Um, you know, if you have to take pain meds, then you have to take pain meds, right? It is what it is. If you if you truthfully need them, but the vast majority of people that I have met who say that they need pain meds have not do not really know anymore if they need pain meds because they've been addicted for so long. They've been dependent for so long that the uh, whether or not the pain is is legit or psychosomatic is something that we won't know until we can get the person clean and clean for a length of time. So very often, unfortunately, once you start down that that path of um, of pain management, it's a very difficult cycle to get out of. Does CBD work for back pain? It does for some people. Fancy Nancy, West Coast Fancy Nancy. Look at this. Now now there can be no confusion. We got Jersey Nancy. Fancy Nancy and West Coast Fancy Nancy. It does for some people beautifully. It's just, it's hit or miss, all right? It's hit or miss with all of those. It, it was really kind of a hit or miss thing. So if it works for you, fantastic, you know, but you're going to have to try it to, uh, to find out. I fought taking uh, weed gummy, right? Um, THC gummies to sleep. So many people said, this is going to stop your chronic nightmares. And because I'm the captain of the lifeboat, I didn't want to come on here and say, I eat THC to go to sleep. Like I did not want to do that. And for that reason, I spent probably 22 months trying one stupid pharmaceutical after another that did nothing except make me feel really, you know, spongy in the morning, like, you know, like unable to do anything. Uh, if I had tapped out and done the uh, the THC route earlier on, I can't tell you the number of nightmares I would I could have avoided. Uh, but sadly, I think all of us, even if we're even if we try not to, we all have this thing in the back of our head that makes us worry about what other people think. Um, now I don't care anymore. I really am that person. Um, there are uh, there are so many other things that uh, that people can hate me for. The fact that I'm taking uh, THC gummies to go to sleep, I don't think is one that uh, that I need to worry about too much. But people, I'm going to be going live again with the Johnny Scoville. Uh, we're going to be going live today, probably from our um, our Paramore or Para Para yeah, the Peruvian per that we're going to go outside under that thing that we built. And uh, we're going to do that um, at some point today. After Y2K and 9-11 school shootings, January 6th, seriously, I'm chicken littled out. If the world ends, I'm just overdue, but I'm not counting on it anymore. Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, I, uh, I think that one of the most beautiful things um, that came from my previous lifestyle is that I don't fear anything. I really don't. And I'm not saying that like Billy Badass because it's not probably a smart thing, but there's just nothing on this planet that I'm afraid of. I am uh, I know that I don't get off of this planet alive, right? It doesn't work that way. We, we know how we're leaving. I'm completely cool with that process. I'm not at all concerned about the, uh, the leaving of this planet. So um, I, I don't fear anything in my life. I fear, I fear for my kids. I fear for stuff like that, but I, I really am to the point where, yeah, I'm a, I, I don't, uh, I want a good seat, <laughs> right? If the, if the end is coming, I want a really good seat. I'm not too uh, worried about it. I'm really not. Charlie Murphy. I love you, my friend. Charlie's a rock star, people. He really is. The man is a rock star. So seventh. In fact, we got a bunch of them here today. Goosebumps. Good to see you. Z-Dub. 
Jeremy Shelton. No, no, spiders are awful and all spiders should be removed from the planet Earth. There is no good reason whatsoever for there to be a spider. I can't think of one good reason. January, February, March, April. Okay, just checking the days of the month here. Thank you. All right, people. I used to be young and fearless. Now I'm older and at peace. I like that. I like that, L Train. I really do. You can be the designated spider mover. Um, I actually have a designated spider mover. I use a flamethrower. Spiders eat mosquitoes, okay? Um, I don't really, uh, I don't really mind getting stung by a mosquito a couple of times a year. Not that big a deal. I can, I can, uh, I can deal with the mosquitoes. Seeking a friend for the end of the world is a great movie. Damn. I hate great movies. I haven't seen because it's a, it's a write-off. I'm not going to be able to. All right, people. If it wasn't for spiders, we would be overrun with flying insects. Is that true? Okay. Then I'll give spiders a pass. No, I can't. I can't. I hate them. They got to go. We'll, we'll figure something else out. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll figure something else out. Spider Rico. Oh my goodness. Uh, Brianna Miller. Have a great day. Lisa Beam. Have a good day. I hope to see all of you here when we talk about that, um, you know, that, that thing. It, uh, when is it going to, we're going to go live right as it's passing overhead. So I'm not exactly sure what time that's going to be, but I would say in the ballpark of 10, you know, spider man pig. No. Spider pig, spider pig does just wanna. Anyway. All right, people, I'm captain Tommy Scoville and I will see you on the next one. Thank you everybody. God bless.